Input shaping has been nothing short of revolutionary for pushing the bounds of 3D printers. It allows them to print much faster while minimizing the effects of things like ghosting and helping to reduce machine vibrations. Until recently, I had a general idea of what it was, but a big portion of it always remained a mystery. I've seen it explained a few ways, but Clipper describes it as an open loop control technique which creates a commanding signal that cancels its own vibrations. Although this can be tuned manually, an accelerometer is commonly used such as an ADXL345 to measure the resonance frequencies. I've heard multiple times that the ideal place to mount it is as close to the nozzle as possible because that is where you will get the most accurate readings. I've been curious to see just how different of a reading you get from the CAN bus board near the extruder to a USB board mounted onto the tool head, and I recently picked up an accelerometer made specifically for nozzle mounting. In today's video, we're going to be hooking these three boards up to my Mercury 1.1 to see just how similar or different our results are. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. For the last few printer builds that I've done running Clipper firmware, I've used the Shaper Calibrate command. This runs the test on both axes and then suggests a recommended input shaping type and frequency for your printer. All that you have to do is click save to have it updated to your config with those values. Overall, I've been happy with that method, but it doesn't give you the full story. When you run input shaping, Clipper generates a .csv file of the captured data. If you SSH into your printer, there's a Python command you can run to turn those sheets into plotted graphs. These can then be downloaded and used to get a much better idea of how things are looking on your printer. We'll touch a bit more on this a little later in the video. Now onto the testing. The first test we will be running is using the Big Tree Tank EBB36. This is a CAN bus board used to simplify toolhead wiring that has its own MCU and a built-in ADXL. This is the farthest from the nozzle being mounted on the back of the extruder motor. Based on the results from bed meshing during the build of this printer, it's looked like the frame was tweaked. This is a stock Creality Ender 5 frame, and once I installed the Hydra bed mod, the weight really seemed to amplify my already imperfect frame. Turning the first input shaper results into a graph really shows that mechanically this printer needs a once-over. Both the X and Y axis came back with multiple peaks, and the Y axis looks to be quite muffled. There is a lot to these graphs, but in an ideal scenario where your printer is stiff, square, completely tightened down, and the belts are tensioned properly, you are wanting to see a singular defined peak for each axis. I think that these graphs can cause you to go a little bit crazy if you're chasing the perfect peak, but they are at least good as a reference point to see if maybe something on your printer needs to be tweaked, and they're a great tool to use if you're swapping out hardware to compare the before and after. Even with my wild looking graphs, I've gotten beautiful high speed prints on my Mercury 1.1. Correcting the mechanical issues should allow me to push the machine even harder and prevent any premature wearing. Moving on to our second task, we will be using the Fisec Portable Input Shaper. This is a small board fitted with an RP2040 and the primary device I've used this past year for calibrating my printers. It has six mounting holes and I will be mounting it to the lower screws of the hot end cooling fan. This puts it much closer to the nozzle than the previous test. Comparing our X graphs from this test to the CAN bus test, we can see the overall shape is similar, but there are some pretty obvious differences. For one, if we look at the left, we can see the power spectral density only goes up to 1.6 on the FISEC test, so all of our peaks are lower. On top of that, we actually removed a higher frequency peak that can be seen around 165 Hz. For the Y graph, it is completely different. Power spectral density caps at 3 instead of over 5, and although there are still multiple peaks, they are much more defined. Looking at the shaper results in the top right corner, we can also see just how drastic a difference these two locations have on the output. Last but not least, we are moving on to the nozzle board. This is a board I saw mentioned by Greg's Maker Corner earlier this year that I thought looked really interesting, so I pre-ordered it back in May. This is an STM32 based board with its unique characteristics being an opening that lets you mount this to your hot end using a nozzle. This should let you get the most accurate reading since it's being mounted right where the filament is going to be extruded. My Mercury 1.1 is using a Revo hot end, so mounting it was a bit tricky. The hole in the board is large enough, but it took a bit of effort to really clamp it down. Since the device works by sensing vibrations, if it's able to move around on its own, the results you get will not be accurate. A standard nozzle like a V6 or Volcano will be much easier to secure the board with. Comparing the X graph from the FISEC board to the nozzle board, once again we can see the differences. Power spectral density peaked higher on the nozzle board, but the peaks are more defined. For Y it's nearly identical, but we can also see that we got rid of the smaller peak on the side around 50 Hz. 
The good news is that the variations between the nozzle and FISEC board are substantially smaller than that of the CAN bus board. So what all does this mean? Well, for those that have been telling me that the CAN bus board is not a great place to get your readings from, this confirms that for me. Now, do I think that it's better than nothing if that's all that you have? Sure, I've been using it for months on a couple of different printers and the results have been fine. Honestly, the X graph isn't all that bad, but my Y measurement has some serious issues. This also confirms to me that the Fistec board I've been using that I tried to mount as low as possible on the hot end fan has also been giving me fairly accurate results. It might have some variation compared to a board mounted directly at the nozzle, but the results are much closer. Of course, this is just a single printer and much more testing on a wide variety of different hardware is needed to validate this, but it is something I've been wondering for some time. For anyone that does want to look more into these input shaping graphs, there's a 30 minute video by 3D printers and a whiteboard that is by far the best breakdown that I've seen on it so far. Additionally, Cineos put together a pretty detailed post in the Clipper forums that is a great place to start. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it gave you some things to consider. Input shaping is definitely a fairly advanced topic and I still have a ton to learn. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are and if there are any other tests you would like to see. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Deanna from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.